Um, the first uh, talk in the session from Liz uh, mentioning Janet Watson reminded me that I was in fact taught by Janet Watson as an undergraduate uh, when, when at Imperial College. And I'd love to report the nuggets of wisdom that she passed on to me uh, some 40 years ago. Sadly, I can't remember anything about it, not even what course she taught us, but I think that says a lot more about me uh, as, a, as an undergraduate than it, it does about Janet uh, as, as a teacher and a, and a fantastic role model geoscientist. So training. Training has been mentioned a few times uh, over the last day and a half. Um, Nick mentioned it this morning uh, in terms of the importance of training uh, as we go forward within the, the uh, uh, with new technologies, digital world, etc. Uh, training was mentioned a few times yesterday uh, as well. Um, that's the focus of, of what uh, I currently do uh, with the RPS group and the Nautilus, which is the training uh, business within, within that. Um, and I start off by making the case to industry that it's, it's obviously it's impacted us as a business, the amount of training um, resources that are now available compared to what they were a few years ago and that companies are still are, are, have not been spending very much uh, in the last few years um, for very good economic reasons of course within the companies but as we've seen the future of our workforce the future of our of, of the industry and of geoscience generally uh, depends on, on people being trained I'm not just saying this because you know, obviously it benefits me because that's the business I work in, but I think we all would recognise that investment in training is going to be key to all of the things that we've been talking about here. So the part, aspect of training that I want to, to talk about fairly briefly, really, this morning, because I'm, I'm conscious of, of, of approaching lunch, uh, is the, uh, the use of the, these 3D outcrop uh, images. Um, so to provide a bit of context of... of what, what um, I feel I can uh, bring to the table on here in, in terms of the experience on, on this is not just from me, but it's also from um, Nautilus, which uh, has been providing training to the oil and gas industry and now to the coal industry as well uh, for uh, 18, 19 years. And it's, it's mainly about geosciences, a little bit other areas as well. I'd say Nautilus has been for six or seven years now past the RPS group. And um, we provided training for an awful lot of companies. Um, and I'm not sort of saying this just to, to promote us as, uh, as a business, um, but to, to give you a context of the, the comments that I'm going to make in, uh, shortly, because we talked to a lot of companies, we've had a lot of experience of delivering training. Um, there's a, however many, well, 3,592 courses that we've we've actually put on for the, uh, for the, for the industry. Um, and I'd love to have thought that that got over 50,000 by the time I gave this talk, but we're not, we're not quite there yet in terms of the number of people uh, that have been participants uh, on our courses. And all this has been done in a collaborative way. I mean, North has started out as a sort of management company for a training alliance between those companies which were not big enough to provide the big training schemes of the uh, Shells, Exxon Mobiles, BPs of this world, um, but um, still wanted to have high quality uh, training for their, for their staff. So it's always been about collaboration. We can, although you know, the business model has changed somewhat, it's no longer sort of a small club of companies working together. We now work with, with uh, well over 100 different um, co companies. But it's still all about consultation, both about individual courses, about programs of things. So this means that there's a lot of dialogue. And, and it's the context of that dialogue that I want to, to, um, to, to mention today. Because the sort of things that we talk about with the companies is, is new initiatives. Where should we be going in terms of consolidating the training we provide, improving the quality of it, making sure it's fit for purpose, that, that we're using appropriate technologies uh, for, for this. So um, it was about three years ago, um, uh, the idea of um, using these, these virtual outcrop uh, images um, was, was something that 
I mean, I've been aware of those, those images because I've seen John Howell give us presentations at, at, uh, at conferences uh, for, for many years. I knew the power uh, of these, these outcrop images. Um, and you know, it seemed a logical step to actually then include 3D outcrop images, uh, these virtual uh, um, outcrop images in, in our training. So I talked with groups of companies in uh, the UK uh, and over in, in uh, Houston as well to get their, their feedback on that uh, initiative. And of course, you know, everyone can see the, the power of it. I mean, you know, we've seen over the last day, and a day or so what wonderful um, bringing to life these, these images uh, can, can do for us. And so to, to bring outcrop imagery into the training to help uh, the training courses and help people understand things was just, you know, everyone said, yes, great. Then I, then there's a bit of a surprise because I mentioned the word virtual field course. And that got a very negative response. And I was taken aback somewhat. I thought, well, surely there's a sort of a logical progression here. But as has been repeatedly said yesterday and today, this is not about replacing real field work. And that was where the, my audience at these meetings was coming from. These were senior geoscientists within companies. Uh, they're exploration managers, they're chief geoscientists, etc. And they were very keen to protect real field work from the bean counters within their companies who they, from their perspective, if they were presented with the option of a real field course to County Clare to look at deep water clastics and a virtual field course to County Clare to look at deep water clastics, the latter was going to be cheaper and therefore, well, why do we need to send people on this, this real field course? <coughs> so I know, we, we, you know we're using the term virtual field, field course uh, all, all the time here and you know, it's a nice shorthand for, for what we want to do is really enhance all of our training, our visualization, our understanding of things. But I just want to make a little word of caution about using that without being very clear about what we, we really want to do with it. I mean, because we all recognize you know, the importance of fieldwork. I mean, I'm, I'm talking to the, to the converted here about you know, why fieldwork is important. And you know, it, it's important not just in early stages when you're at school or a, a, as a student, but right through your career. If you're working as a geoscientist, you need to be able to visualize things at different scales. And of course, we all know you can really only do that in the field. You only get the real interpretation of an understanding of things uh, in the field. And of course, from some companies' perspective, it can be a way of getting groups of people together out of the office environment, getting them talking. So there's, there's I mean, some of the, the, the training that we provide is actually facilitating these sorts of group discussions uh, within, uh, within companies. So we've been using this, this imagery in our training courses for, for, for over two years now um, because we could see straight away uh, the, the value of it. Um, and, you know, every time we've used these images, the response we've had has been fantastic. So, so no doubt at all that virtual outcrop imagery is something which is a powerful tool for helping people visualize things and understand things. And the way it really works well, and, you know, and, and John will, will um, back this up because he's done this himself with other uh, teaching at universities and for companies, is you, um, you can introduce the area. To the start of the day or the night before, before you go out into the field, you can provide the, the context of things, you can provide the overview, a fly through, or you take one of these images and, and be able to manipulate it and point out uh, the key things. And at the end of the day, you can use it as a prompt for giving an overview of what's been seen during the day. So as an educational tool, it's, it's very powerful. And you can get aspects of things which you can't actually see in the field. You often be here in, in County Clare, you'd be standing on the top of the cliff and you can't don't get the perspective uh, of, of things. You can see parts of the succession which are simply not visible 
uh, in, in the field. So, you know, the close-ups of the, the, the tops of, of, of cliffs or bottoms of cliffs or what, whatever. And also those places which are inaccessible <coughs> due to safety reasons, for tide reasons, etc. And of course, you know, we do field courses in all parts of the, of the world, and some of those parts of the world, not particularly mentioned in County Clare, can have their challenges in terms of weather. So, you know, you have a bad weather day, then at least you've got some sort of backup, you can do some learning um, in sort of the classroom, back at the hotel or whatever, um, when you can't get so much out of the, out of the field. And of course, we'd initially introduced the, the concept of, of having um, these 3D outcrop images uh, as, as an adjunct to our field work, but of course, once you have these images, they're a fantastic tool to use in the classroom as well. Um, you know, you, because you, you can, as, as the tutor, you can show things from different perspectives, you can pass these images on online platforms to the, to the participants of the courses, they can explore things themselves. There's fantastic op opportunities for sort of directed learning, um, interactive learning, using these images. I think we're only just starting to scratch the surface of the possibilities of, of um, what's, what's possible there. And so, you know, as I say, it creates new opportunities for, for, for classroom uh, 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 teaching. So I think once you start to use these images, the, the possibilities pretty much become uh, endless. And the title of the, the, the talk, as I said, the Worldwide Field Course, because the way that um, uh, we can use it uh, as an example is, is if I'm taking a, a course on you know, fluvial sedimentology, fluvial reservoirs or whatever, and uh, I could be uh, in the, the, the lower picture there, which is the Isle of Wight, um, and you can see some nice you know, meandering channel belt sandstones there. But at the same time, I could be showing back in the, in the hotel, in the classroom, other examples here, shown here in that inset, which is from northern Spain, in the Miocene of Spain. And you can sort of, you've got an opportunity of comparing and contrasting, which you can sometimes do in the field, but of course, you know, a single field location always has the limitations of what you can actually see and get to uh, at, at that point. And so being able to bring examples from different places, again, becomes incredibly powerful. Because that's what we're often doing for our, uh, our training, is we're not, we're not often just taking a group to a, a location because we want to look at the geology of the Dorset coast. We're, we're, we're taking a group of people to an area because you want, you've got particular learning outcomes that you want to achieve. And so it's not that the, the, the field course element has, is be, and being out in the field is to bring in those other elements of seeing things at different scales, interaction of people, actually people getting their hands on the rocks, which is, of course, always, always valuable. Um, but... Uh, what, so a, a field course, a virtual field course, so to speak, which was just to a particular area, wouldn't actually be achieving what, what our training goals usually are. Our training goals are usually to enhance people's knowledge about you know, um, uh, fracture orientations and fr fracture distributions within a, a set of, of, of rocks. So we, you'd take them to, to, to different locations, but of course we can now bring in more locations as from all over the world as part of that, that training uh, exercise. So that, that's sort of the, the context, really. I'm so talking about you know, a, a worldwide field course because having virtual images means you can, you can bring these things to the field, to, to the cl classroom. And you know, it's, it's all about the enhancement of the, the, the training experience, so helping people to, to, to learn better. And that's, I think, what, where the fantastic opportunities that uh, 3D outcrop uh, imagery uh, provides to us. And we're talking about sort of data storage and things. We, uh, after a while, we realized the importance of actually organizing our images. Of course, you start to sort of collect these images, you sort of process them, you put them on a server somewhere, and then you think, well, who knows where all this stuff is? 
And as you start to even have a few, few tens of images, and we're, we're now somewhere around 100 different sort of locations that we have data from, um, it soon became important to realize that we had to compile that into a database. If only for our own purposes, but actually because the way that we work is that we provide, um, uh, we provide the training courses to companies, but we contract subject matter experts to actually deliver that, that training. Um, so we want to make these images available to all our tutors, whether they've been involved in the collection of these, da these data or not. So this is, provides a resource uh, with, for our, our tutors, it pr provides a resource for us. And actually this, this database is uh, about to become available to, to companies um, uh, if they want to, 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 to sort of look through this themselves. If anyone is interested in that, they could perhaps uh, uh, talk to me uh, over lunch. So, um, yeah, lunch is, is coming up pretty, pretty soon. I'm not quite sure why I put an elephant in at the end. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> you say, oh, is the elephant in the room. I don't, I don't think it's as big as that. I, it's, it's just, I just wanted to say that I, I think that this, this, this virtual outcrop imagery um, is a fantastic resource and, and it will revolutionize the way that we do all sorts of things in terms of things. I just, from my experience of talking to people within the oil industry over the last couple of years, I just have this slight niggling concern about the term virtual fieldwork because we, we all know that it's not replacing fi real fieldwork, but I, I just have this slight fear that we might be giving the impression to people who don't understand that it could be a replacement. And, and that's what I think we need to be a little bit careful of. Thank you very much. <laughs>